Ah, ¿por qué te voy a mandar cuatro personas para allá? Ah, que se venga porque ya voy a comenzar a subir. Ok. That way. Okay. Actually, go straight and all the way down there is the variety gardens. And Great. Everyone is in there. Thank you okay. very much. Okay, Gracias. No and this is Chardonnay. Valley of Casablanca and Limari Valley. So it's a blend of two different valleys with the same variety. If you will look the color of this wine, you can tell it's a very soft gold, clear yellow. Observe. I'm going to take off my sunglasses and everything, John. <laughs> She's a prettier subject. Go ahead. Yeah. Now we're going to take it to nose. But now we will swirl it. And once again, we take it to nose. Different. Yeah. When we swirl the wine, we give oxygen to it. So that opens all those atoms and it's gonna be easy for us to recognize it. In this wine, we can tell the atoms of green apples, pineapples, pears, and a little bit of lime too. But some of you can get a soft touch of vanilla because Chardonnay by Casillero del Diablo stayed between three and six months in the French oak barrel. So from there, I got the soft touch of vanilla. Cheers. Cheers. Gracias. Salud. Do you remember um, Trader Joe's when you were in California? Trader? Trader Joe's. This, this is a specialty store. And they carry this they exact carry bottle. Really? I, can, I get it at home. Wow! In my refrigerator right now. From Concha de Toro? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. In San Francisco? Mm -hmm. Yes. And the wine can stay here for a maximum of 18 months. And there is a lot of growth factor. So mm -hmm. the boat and a little bit of More air can get through the wine. And the wine can stay for a maximum of 10 months. Mm -hmm. It's a possible all the barrels. 225 years. Yeah. <laughs> it's spraying that, looks like it's spraying vapor, water vapor. Well, I've never seen that before. It's all the way down here, and I've never seen it this before. Me either. mysterious legend. One that began in this cellar over 100 years ago. It all started in the year 1883 when Don Melchor de Concha y Toro, founder of this winery, brought back to Chile the most exclusive grapevines <laughs> from the border region of France. These varieties developed extraordinarily well in this fertile Maipo Valley soil, achieving unexpectedly good results. Aware of just how good his wine was, Don Melchor de Concha y Toro decided to set some of the best wines aside for his family circle. In an area set apart specifically, these wines were kept at the end of this magnificent cellar to assure constant conditions of temperature and humidity. Don Melchor de Concha y Toro realized after a while that these wines were mysteriously disappearing. After thinking the situation through, he came to the conclusion that local people were stealing his wines. <laughs> Knowing just how superstitious locals were, he decided to say the devil lived in this cellar. Oh. The story proved its worth and had good results. Fear discouraged thieves <laughs> and never did another bottle disappear. Oh. His plan had worked. Simple rumor 
began to turn into legend. Uh, there he is. Local people <laughs> became convinced that the devil did actually live there. There were even those who said they had seen him. Uh oh, we're gonna see him. Now, more than 100 years later, the legend that Melchor Conchaitoro created is still alive within these walls. Oh. This is how the name of this cellar came about, and has since been adopted by perhaps the most famous Chilean wine in the world, Casillero del Diablo, the Devil's Cellar. And now that you've experienced the mystery behind the legend, it's your turn to spread the rumor around the world. So, John, I don't know if you recall, but Andy told us that story. You may have tuned him out, but Andy told us this story. Andy, oh, and if you don't remember, I'm sure we could ask him. And... Uh, I apologize to Andy. I might have been... I'm listening to those. Are those parakeets, Kathy, or parrots? They sound like parrots. Un señor. Este pájaro son... Loro Quintino, Loro okay, gracias. Aha, uh -huh. but these Argentine parakeets are... <laughs> when they go to an area, yeah. they take away all the rest of uh, the birds that uh -huh. they are living there. Uh. And for the people that who have different agriculture areas, uh -huh. they eat all the seeds and destroy the crops. Oh, okay, so they're really, they're really a pest, huh? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got new shoots in the bottom part, and rabbits. Rabbits love, love those. Oh. I'm sure. So if they come and bite it, they destroy the vine. So in a way to protect them, we put the plastic bag so they get closer, and the noise will spread away. Ah, mm -hmm. interesting. Okay. Torrentel, she said, is mostly grown for pisco. Do you know pisco? She asked. We all said yes. She just picked a few Pinot Blanc for us and let us taste them. Very sweet. This variety is very special for the Chilean people because for many, many years people thought there was no more carbonate in the world, that it was extinct. Thus, why by 1883, excuse me, 1863, in France they started a plague called phylloxera. That mm -hmm. is a small bag that go deep into the soil and eats the roots of the vines. Mm -hmm. So the vines die. By the end of 1895, this plague also affected Spain and the rest of Europe, destroying the vines. It was 1994. An ampelographer came to Chile from France and visited the Merlot variety and discovered that a few leaves that does not belong to the Merlot. He took those leaves through the lab and discovered there was Carmen Air. What it happened? Chilean people went to France bringing the Merlot prior this plague, but it was mixed with Carmen Air. For over a hundred years, we were producing a blend of Merlot with Carmenet without knowing. Mm. <laughs> no longer than 15 years that we split both varieties and we produce them by separated. Wow, mm. neat story. In the whole world, there's going to be just one country free of the black phylloxera. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> nice little tasting of Merlot grapes, Syrah grapes, and Pinot Noir grapes to get a feel for the difference in terms of the grape taste. Another tasting of grapes of Cabernet Franc and Grenache. Let's talk about it. After the harvest, by the first week of June, we made the prunk. So we're going to be cutting all these bunches mm -hmm. out. Get out of here. Mm -hmm. Taste of this petite verdot too. And um, get out. And um, so by then. We're going to be just leaving the principal trunk mm -hmm. and the charger arms. And the vine seems to be resting for the whole winter season. Mm -hmm. By uh, it's going to be by the middle of September, when our spring starts, she's going to be shooting back again. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to see the whole process, you know. Every day coming here, oh, you look at it, oh, yeah, you see the bunches are coming. Yeah, the little ones. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole process and it's really good. You're going to have just my name. I'm going to be What is your name? Barbara. 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 Okay. Don't yes. Barbara. Doña Barbara. Doña Barbara has the book. <laughs> <laughs>